Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about CPAC, what it means for the Republican Party in the future, what we missed, because we missed something in the conversations that occurred over the weekend. That's this. Part two will be coming this afternoon, and it's what it means for the Democratic Party. Okay, so if you don't know, CPAC is an incredibly influential conservative conference. It happened over the weekend. Three days of fun and sun and just amazing intellectual discourse and conservative thought. Okay, what was it really? A three-day Trump praise-a-thon with hand-picked speakers who were going to praise the man for the crowd. If you were a Republican but you were not a Trump supporter, this event wasn't for you. It was billed as being pro-Trump. Everything about it was set up to be pro-Trump. The speakers, the attendees, the decor, they had, I'm not joking, a little golden Trump idol thing? I, I don't know what to call it. I'm sure that people are going to talk about the decor at length, so we're going to kind of skip over that. The basic series of events was, it was three days of warm-up, people praising Trump, and then a speech from dear leader himself. That's what got covered. There were polls that were taken, and two that matter. These polls were taken of the attendees, pro-Trump people. 95% of those in attendance want the Republican Party to carry Trump's policy and agenda. They want to carry that forward. But only 55% said Trump was their preferred candidate. That's important because this is a very influential conservative conference. That's important. The most likely outcome from that is that the Republican Party will take policy points and agenda directives from Trump, but it's going to be somebody else carrying the message. DeSantis or Hawley, somebody like that. That's the most likely outcome unless somebody intervenes. There's a problem with that, and it's a big one. Trump doesn't have policy. He never did. He has sound bites. He doesn't have policy. If he had policy, if he had successful policy, he wouldn't have to get on stage at this event in front of his supporters and lie about successes, talking about how we had a $500 billion trade deficit with China and he fixed it and all of that. The reality is our biggest was in the 300s and it was in the middle of his term. His policies were an unmitigated failure. But Trump himself, well, he could spin that. He could talk in a way that would make a certain group of people feel warm and fuzzy about his sound bites. They believed him. They didn't believe in his policies. Most of them don't even know what it was. They don't know what he did. They know what he told them. But now they want Trump's policies, but they want DeSantis or Holly to carry the message. DeSantis and Holly were, even if you like them, they were Trump yes men. They were copies of a losing candidate. They don't have his charisma. They're not going to be able to make people feel warm and fuzzy about failed policies the way Trump could. This is a losing recipe for the Republican Party. And it appears like they're leaning into it. It certainly looks like they put all of their eggs in one basket and then dropped it and stepped on it and then beat it with an American flag. That's what it looks like. If McConnell or Romney doesn't get control of that party and soon, they're done. 
they're going to be politically ineffective for a while because they're going to be taking policy points from somebody who has no idea what policy is. He's going to bark orders into a phone. They're going to try to obey. And when they mess up, well, he'll blame them. It's what he's always done. And then there's something else that might sow some discord within the Republican Party. Trump's kids have political aspirations of their own. DeSantis, Holly, they polled higher. Ivanka and uh, the brother, whatever his name is, they didn't poll very well, single digits. If we know anything about the Trumps, it's that they're in it for themselves. So when they start handing policy points and directives to DeSantis or Holly, and then they inevitably fail because it's bad policy, who do you think they're going to blame? Who do you think they're going to turn on? Probably DeSantis. Probably Holly. Because realistically, they're going to be hoping for it. Because they have to get them out of the way so we can have President Ivanka one day. The Republican Party is at its weakest point in decades. If the Democrats can muster the courage and seize upon this, Biden can get the one thing he truly wants. And we will talk about that in part two. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.